There we go. Okay. One sec. Let's pause that and get back here. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Cockney word of the where did you go? Okay. One sec. Can you not fall on me, thanks, computer? Ah! Nope. Also, hi. <laughs> okay. Really? Really? Where did it go? Sorry about the movement, guys. But seriously, where is that? It was right there. There you are. Okay. Okay. Hollow. Okay, so starting with H. You want the Cockney or the English to start with H? Can you stop moving? Ah, okay. Okay, all right, so. <laughs> there's just, there's some of these and it's like, okay, that was a choice, but okay. <laughs> um, all right, so the first one in H is Hampstead Heath. It's apparently teeth. As in, like my new Amsteads, or Amps, apparently, is a short form. So there's that. Uh, yeah. Ow, come here. Yeah, like that. Okay. <sighs> Ow! <laughs> so. What are we doing? One sec. Alright. We can presumably lose teeth playing right on F City. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Alright. Greetings, people. Uh, so. As you might deduce from the thingamabobble up yonder here, we're doing 
37 to 42. It's considerably shorter than usual. But I'm currently halfway through chapter 43. So, yeah. Um, and for... Uh, for those who have read the entire rest of the book as of yet, um, that, that was a sentence. Wow, okay. <laughs> for, for those who have read the rest of the book, uh, that translates to, uh, Donis knows that Levi is involved with the meth, that the cash has been filtered through their joint account, and um, has started having flashbacks to the assault that she was subjected to. Um, and what was it? Uh, where I stopped <laughs> Think cops and have done homework. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, where I stopped reading just now, because, like, I was trying to, you know, read more uh, while waiting for the computer to work, uh, is um, Donna showed her mom the picture that Levi left at a place. So, yeah. Also, because I don't know if it's, um, I don't know if it's in the descriptions or anything, but... In case her name isn't already typed out somewhere, that's how you spell it. Because <laughs> I know you guys were listening to the audio form. So, yeah. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. That was my shoulders. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she snooped in Levi's room, found the um the back statements showing that he'd been supposedly having dealings with meth, or at least for some reason needed to transfer money to Panama since he became part of the superiors team and realized that because he was a minor at the time that he was probably doing the transfers under her name yeah it i mean It's one of those that the left shoulder has issues. So, like, it's it's not, you know, the capacity in here. It's not a sports injury or anything. But, like, when she's talking about, you know, the left, like, kind of bum shoulder, that was, it, it was bringing... <laughs> It was ringing a lot. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, can we discuss how the squirrel was a freaking gift and how she could have told Dana she saw the squirrel get in and was trying to help her move it? I mean, that could work, yeah. Yeah. Really. I, like, I was thinking that, honestly. Um. Stay. I don't know. Because, yeah, otherwise, it, it would be a matter of, like, Unless one of them can pick a lock from the outside, you'd have to have the key to get in, and if the deadbolt's on there, that'd be another key entirely most of the time. But, like, that, that whole sequence was kind of confusing. Because, like, if... If she opened the door to the house, and then went through a window to get on the roof, and then went through another window to get to the, the balcony, is that, is that what it sounded like? Because part of, part of the issue, admittedly, is that Aside from when I've been in, like, student housing, and there's, like, a sheer wall because it's just an apartment block with no, um, balconies or anything, I've always lived in a single story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dana came by and decided to play with the dog. Saw a squirrel crow in the window. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because she has a good relationship with Dana. So, I don't know. Like, I get why. Especially if it's like, the last 24 hours have been rather, um, traumatic and things and, uh, everything just piling up. Like, I can see just kind of maybe not having the most logical processes happening. Only problem is how did the squirrel take the screen off the window? Maybe the squirrel not in a hole in the screen. <laughs> Was there a screen? I don't remember. Ugh. That was fuzz. Okay. Because I honestly don't remember. Um, <sighs> Alright, let's see. Uh, Yeah. Um, well, I try and find that bit. Um, like, 
like, I mean, uh, clearly the squirrel made an impression. <laughs> Uh, ah, there you are. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. Fours. Yeah, okay. All right. So, all right. If the screen is off, okay. The lid in the basket and put it back on my shelf. Uh, deadbolt. Push the button to relock it. Yeah, so she had to take the screen off the window. And then, after handling the screen barehanded, it's either not back on the window, or... I don't know. Yeah, seriously, Grant? Oh my god. <gasps> ah! mm. Dang, we're getting tired early. You just stream yelling, have it robot <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um Yeah. Understandable though. Like I I had like real low energy yesterday. And then <laughs> just like <laughs> Ended up plodding through washing the cars and stuff. So, I don't know. <laughs> on that. <laughs> to be fair. Like, I have no idea. Um. But, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, now it's like, there's, the, there's... There's just a little bit left, and it's like, I want to read, but, like, also. But seriously, like, Grant? Wow. Just, no. Alright, also, from breaking into our own apartment, screens damage easily in the removal process. Yeah, like, I don't know how it is for anyone else, or, like, if there's different kinds of screen, or what. But... I remember, um, I remember locking myself out of the house back in, it was sometime in undergrad. <laughs> and ended up having to, like, pry up. The screen on um, one of the windows and stuff, and it's fine now. It's fully like stabilized and re-secured and everything. But like for a bit there, like like <laughs> there <laughs> there was a nail on the outside of the house. And it kind of, like, wasn't fully secure <laughs> in there. But the screen itself was fine. It's just the supporting mechanisms around it were kind of wonkified. But it's 
okay now, which is good. <sighs> we had to pay to replace it because we went in the frame. Ooh, yeah. I think I ended up... For ours, it was, like... It was just a, a thing where I needed to wedge something under it and, like, pop it out a little bit. So, there happened to be a full, like, a tool chest that we've got out back. And screwdrivers and stuff. But... Yeah. Going head first into a window is an experience. <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> Especially when the top of the window comes to like here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to operate it because like, alright no one else is home right now, okay uh, so either I just hang out in the backyard by myself in the middle of the summer when it's hot you know, until like eh. I don't know, for like three, four hours <laughs> until someone shows up or I break in. So it's like, okay. Hello, X. Uh, any ideas just out of curiosity? I just cut into it. Like, you want me to what? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> At least we escaped both the blackberry brambles beneath the window and the shelves of chemicals on the other side. Oi. It's rather impressive now we think about it. Yeah, seriously. Like, I I ended up needing to... Oh, what, what did I do? There was like a flower pot, I think, and a pile of compost. Like, just, I ended up piling up bags of compost in an upended flower pot or something. To get to the... No, it was a cinder block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of bags of compost and a cinder block, I think. And, like... <laughs> went head first into the bathroom window. <laughs> when you have to use the toilet to break your fall, going head first through a window, it's... At something. But yeah, no, like, missing, missing blackberry brambles and chemicals is a feat in and of itself. Like, seriously. Seriously. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, now the FBI knows two people to tap if they need secret scrolls. <laughs> Hello, FBI people. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Uh Oh, man. Um, but yeah, like, again, just on, on the text itself, right? I have no idea where this came from. Like, just random side note. I have no idea where this came from, but there's, like, a bruise that's just been here randomly for the last, like, two weeks. <laughs> it's like, 
it it's like smaller than thumbprint sized. I have no idea. And it's just like there. <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> if you're monitoring this stream, hello FBI. Greetings. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So, no. Oh, yeah. Um, agreed with with what you guys were saying. Um, on what she says about love in thirty seven. Uh, what was it? Uh, real love honors your spirit. If you need a medicine to create or keep it, that's possession and control, not love. So. Very good. Yes. Um. Alright. And. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Um... Hmm. So it seemed like she actually talks to Travis's spirit at one point. Um, not yet. That might be a thing that happens later, and... I can totally see that being a thing, like, that being an aspect, but at present, I'm not saying it, um, it looks like, it looks like most of it so far, at least, you know, like, with, <laughs> With a, a decent chunk left to go. But it looks like, so far at least, it's mostly, um... Delayed recall, I guess. Would that, would that be the, the right term? Or, or something memories recovered recovered memories I think <laughs> uh, brain. Uh, heads up viewers today's discussion may include sexual assault in the novel please take care of yourself yeah Exactly. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um. Exactly. Recovered memory sounds right. Yeah. Uh. Because every. The setting isn't different. And. The. Well, granted, 
for some instances that I've I've heard where someone is talking to the spirit of either in text or uh, in personal accounts or what have you, and the setting isn't necessarily important, and sometimes it shifts around with what have you, but each time she's talked to Travis, it's always had the same start and the same end. It's just there's more details that get fleshed out. And as far as I can tell, the the part before Lily is killed has been fleshed out. Um, so it's something that would have been in, in this shooting. Maybe. Um. Okay. I mean, it's quite possible. Uh. At this point. Okay. So, like, the last, um, the last, like, recovered memory or vision or conversation with, uh, Travis that I've read, at least, is, um, when he tells her that... Uh, it was Levi that shot the BB gun, and he took the fall because, uh, Levi said that he would be so grateful if, uh, Travis said it was him instead. So, I don't know. But yeah, if it's... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that, that part I can kind of see as, like, if you're in um, discussion sort of mode of, like, trying to... Yeah. Like, part of that I can see. But then he ends it with... Um, what was it? Uh, Lily believed me when I told her the truth. She just couldn't hurt you with it. She's the best. Don't you see? I had to take her with me. And then it cuts off. So I had to take her with me. Sounds like it's premeditated. Um, but that um but also it sounds like it's someone who is deceased and uh is recounting okay i heard a beep sort of sound just now was that the mic or was that just ambient something or my ears But yeah, that that particular passage, yeah, that that one was a bit odd. Um, so I would not be surprised if okay, good to know. The audio seems to be clear still. Um, 
But yeah, no. If I would not be surprised if um that was a thing. And she was, I don't know, having uh, a dream conversation or uh, something of that nature. I don't know. Um, but yeah. We shall see. Actually. One sec. Yeah, yeah. And just... I realize that... It's a pretty... Relatively, at least, tight-knit community. So... The majority of them there know that she's not, like, someone who likes dresses and whatnot. But just the idea that... It's some kind of, like, formal thing, and she's going into the fitting, like, okay, fine, all right, I have to go wear a dress, it's not my thing, but okay, yeah, fine, whatever, and is presented with pants as a jumpsuit sort of situation, like, ah, okay, that's cool. Awesome. But, yeah. Um. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I... The... Culottes, yeah. Yeah. I think the closest... We had culottes in Scouts for a bit. But past that, I think the closest I got was a Scort. Like, I don't know, I must have been like seven or eight wearing a jean skirt thing to class. In like February. <laughs> <laughs> it was a brilliant move, I assure you. Ah, <laughs> uh, that that was also back when um, well, it 
it was the their short shorts and spaghetti strap top era. So like that that's that's the the length that we're going with on that. But yeah, it mm. It was also as cool that it was cold outside and they had the air on inside because reasons. Um, yeah. So. Um. I don't know. Part okay. <clears throat> Part of the the thing that's tripping me up is that a lot of what's happening in yeah, what's it? A lot of what's happening in uh these chapters is tied up with um the run up to and direct after response of Donna's being assaulted and I'm trying to figure how to phrase stuff and whatnot because it's still kind of processing a bit and not to trigger anybody. So that's that's where we are right now on that. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed, a, a brilliant move, indeed, on that. Like, I just, I just have questions for Twitch on how the whole, like, clip naming thing works, you know? Because, like... Homely spotless walruses. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good, good plan. Um, okay, so we're going to finish the rest of it on Thursday and go from there. Uh, all right, one sec. And yes, I am that person who keeps all of the pens in <laughs> the original packaging in Rainbow Order. <laughs> because otherwise... Ah! Um, partly because it's really easy to hold down the full page with this and just use it as a ruler to uh, underline. Okay, if you put a body in the compost, can you still use it to mulch your veggies? I mean, if the FBI weren't tracking the stream already, they might now, which, you know, 
fair. We can all learn stuff. Because, <laughs> like, uh, what was it? That's, <laughs> that's how I've been doing the underlining for everything. Okay. I'll read you later. Okay. There's that. Put this over here. Ow. Can you not with that? Thanks. No? No? Too? Too much? Really? Really? Stab it. I make one request that you don't fall everywhere. And you're just like, nah. Ow. Okay. There we go. Uh... Okay. Can you not? Okay. Um. Okay, come on, come on, let me update it. Okay, <clears throat> so You go to the Edge homepage and you get Celebrate Pride with us as we work together for change. Discover LGBTQIA plus at Microsoft. Hmm. Interesting. No, it just automatically found the thing. Awesome. So I don't have to mess with it. Okay. So... What do we have? Uh... <coughs> All right. So, let's see for composting. We've got animal manure, digest from herbivores, cardboard, material boxes, eggshells, but not eggs. Seaweed without the salt water. Okay. Uh, okay, so. If you have like meat or whatnot in there, uh, there could be <clears throat> odor problems and pests, and if it's diseased or insect-ridden plants, then that disease or insects might spread. Um, if it's pet waste, it could contain parasites or germs. Uh, 
Black walnut tree leaves or twigs have substances that are harmful to plants. Okay, so we've got... Okay, see, here's the thing on that. Um, you could totally make a rainbow-esque compost with different, um, additives and whatnot. However, um, Let me see if I can find this. Yeah, no. Where did it go? Why? Why is unicorn poop candy a thing? I don't. What? Really? <sighs> Where is it? There's. <sighs> Okay. There we go. That it's not unicorn poo, but unicorn spit is the thing. <laughs> that you can use. <laughs> And a lot of different things, apparently. So, so there's that. Um, each each bottle that's like, you know, I don't know, like, yay big by, like that that big around, is like. Ten to twenty dollars, depending on where you get it from, I think. But yeah, yep, that's okay. Just a thing, right? Who, who in the frick fraggity up here? Uh, is making the paint scented, right? Like, like, why? Why? Or, why? <laughs> why are y'all making jasmine and lemongrass scented paint? I know it's a gel stained glaze thing, but like, it's paint. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, if you if you want to check it out, that's the link to it. Otherwise, it's like, yeah. It's one of those that it was so random and weird and stuff. And when I was working at the craft store, like, no one even knew it existed until people kept coming up and wanting to buy it. Because they found it on, I don't know, YouTube or TikTok or something. And it was, like, so cool. And it was, like, the only thing that you could use to do meh. So, like, you have to use it. Obviously, it's so great. 
So we'd come in and pay like, I don't know, $12, $15 for one of those. But because they're so small and in high demand, people kept just walking out of the store with them. So, like, <laughs> instead of having a sign or something that's like, this is on the shelf where it would be, go see the cashier, or having a sign at the register, like, this is over here, or whatever. They were just locked up at the register with no sign, and if you didn't know that they were there, they were just locked in a thing to the point that I don't think anyone bought them for, like, two months because no one knew that they were there. <laughs> in a completely unlit section of the thing, so... I don't know. I don't know about that. Because having unscented paint didn't get them high enough. <clears throat> Seriously. It's like... Somewhere around here I have a pack of scented markers. But, like, they never smelled like how they were supposed to anyway. So, I don't... You know? Why? Why? Um... Yeah. <laughs> I still remember, like, all right. <sighs> I remember one time, right, when I was doing the masters, they had those like, sign up for this psychology test thing, and then you'll get, you know, five pounds or whatever it was. <laughs> for one that I actually participated in. Like, <laughs> it was a matter of go in, put, um, what was it, and put on a blindfold and <laughs> sniff the scented markers to see how accurate this, the, the thing that it says that it's supposed to be is to what it's supposed to be. I don't remember if it was, like, Mr. Sketch and some kind of off-brand or what, but, yeah, that was, that was something that they came up with. Because Kent... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh anyway. Um I thought that's what would come up. Okay. Okay, one sec. <sighs> I don't know if it's because <clears throat> my... I don't know if it's because my belt was too tight or what, but it just felt like it was getting stabbed in the side right there. <clears throat> Ow.
Okay. I'll be right back. One. One sec. It's because my belt was too tight. Okay, uh, yeah, I really need to figure out the weirdness that's happening with the, the chat box over here. Like, seriously, what is going on with it? Um, okay. So... Uh, all right, we participated in an experiment while, where when we were filling out the forms, two guys ran through and pretended to get in a physical fight. 
No one did anything to explain to the researcher the flaw in their methodology. <laughs> you guys were extremely well known on campus and both happened to be friends of ours. So we knew it wasn't a real fight and cause for concern. <laughs> also, the guys were theater people, so everyone knew the scenario was sus. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh... <laughs> Oh, well, friends. Okay. <sighs> oh, man. Yeah, um... I don't know if it was, like, a weird pressure thing or what, but changed from jeans to leggings, and things seem better now, so I'll take it as a win on that one. Uh, also, you need to figure out piping in Discord call audio. You want to be composted and grow beautiful roses. Yay for complete. Um, honestly, the Discord call audio wouldn't be hard. It would just mean, well... Actually, yeah, because <laughs> that would mean um, either only having that open as the thing and muting everything else, or something. I don't know. It, it's very doable, though. We could, we could totally do that. Ow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, could totally do that. Um, can you not do that? Maybe, um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no, totally. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, we'll figure out how to get that to work. Um, yeah. All right. So... Did I already paste this in? I don't remember. No. Okay. I was going to and then got stabbed in the side. <laughs> Come on. Alternatively, we would like to fertilize a dog park. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. Totally. Um, okay. What do we got? Uh. <laughs> okay, so, like, what I read, right? What I read was... People want other opinions buried. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, well, that took a political turn. No, 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 no. People want other options besides burial and cremation. <laughs> that makes more sense. Alright, so, 
Washington's the first state to legalize human composting after death. Uh, stop it. There we go. Uh, as an after death alternative to cremation or burial. This method turns human remains into nutrient-rich topsoil in four to seven weeks. Aiming to give residents ample options and align with their diverse values, the bill also legalizes water cremation, which that one, um, I forget the methods, but that's the one that I've heard the most about recently, so I don't know. People do tend to want other opinions very. <laughs> Top rocks look like a pug face. They do. They really do. Like, especially, like, right, right in here. It's like, yes. Yes, indeed. Um, okay. When someone dies, usually their remains are processed in one of two ways. Burial in a casket or cremation by intense heat. Uh, recently, Washington State became the first state to add natural organic reduction, also known as human composting or recomposition, to its list of legal options. Human composting is an accelerated method of turning human remains into one cubic yard of nutrient-rich soil. It's around three to four barrel full, wheelbarrow fulls full of soil. Uh, if the thought of putting soil from grandma's remains on your vegetable beds might make you squeamish, advocates point out the soil can be left in, at places similar to how someone might spread a loved one's ashes uh, at a meaningful location. The soil can be used by conservation groups to help a nearby park or forest favored by the deceased. Human composting is also a more natural and sustainable option than burial or cremation, according to supporters. This option joins a growing trend to eschew traditional burial or cremation in favor of innovative ways to dispose of the deceased. In several states, including Washington, another option called alkaline hydrolysis or water cremation, where the remains are dissolved by a mixture of chemicals, has also been signed into law. Um, I know there's a place in... I want to say San Diego... It does the water cremation, but can't remember off the top of my head. Come on, there we go. Uh, designer and entrepreneur Katrina Spade is the brainchild. Is that just okay? Logistical question here. Is that the right? use of the word brainchild because like when I've used it when I've heard it used it's almost always as like this is my brainchild because it's it's a thing that was produced in the brain and then it's now a thing like it's not the person who created the thing just, like, I know it's a tangent, but, like, also... <laughs> so, yeah, I... moving on. Uh, <clears throat> Spade founded... Recompose, a human composting company, and has spent more than five years developing and testing the technique. <sighs> human composting will take place in designated facilities like Recompose's future Seattle location. Their body will be placed inside a vessel filled with wood chips and straw, combined with careful balance of oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and moisture. These materials speed up and support microbial activity, which breaks down the remains on a molecular level. With the aerated process, oxygen is a really important piece because essentially what we're doing is creating the right environment for microbes to do their job. 
The material is also mixed several times during decomposition to make sure it's thorough. Um, this accelerated composting process transforms the body into safe, usable, and odorless soil in four to seven weeks. That soil can then be taken home by loved ones or used to nourish public lands. In 2018, Recompose partnered with Washington State University to run a pilot study of human composting using the remains of six people who donated their remains for that specific research. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I remember something about that back when it was happening. Uh, using the recomposed method, the body found... The, the, <laughs> the body found... The study found that human composting was effective. The resulting soil was nutrient-rich and compiled, uh, complied with all federal and state safety guidelines for pathogens and pollutants such as metals. When the concept... Well, the concept may seem novel or shocking. Some people say it's one of the oldest methods known to man. Recompose gets as close to the natural process of decomposition as uh, you'd assume a body would undergo before we had an industrialized society. Uh, says uh, Troy Hoddle, a postdoc fellow with the U uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um... Okay. Yeah, so... There we go. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I remember hearing something about that back in 2018 when the study was being done, or like 2019 probably, when they were releasing information and stuff. Um, mostly because at that point, I was... Uh, dear squeamish people, it's our understanding roadkill is already basically composted and used for fertilizing pu public lands or sold to fertilizer companies. That would make sense, yeah. Um, like, I was paying a lot more attention to uh, stuff like this back in 2018-2019 because I was more into the um, like, end-of-life side of anthropology and stuff. Um, at one point, I was wanting to do uh, forensic anthropology, which I'm cool with the bones, and I'm cool with the live people. But especially if, like, I'm on site needing to excavate something when uh just just as a logistical thing right if i'm on site and there's remains in general somewhere between the uh living being and the bones um Uh, sensitivity to smells and other things <laughs> comes into play, you know, on that. But yeah, embalming is so toxic, it's, wow. Um. 
but ah. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, actually, actually, I can just plan to read this thing in October. Um, but I haven't, I haven't watched her content really for the last like year or so. I, uh, I know there was, there was some kind of shenanigans uh happening at one point but where where is it i uh, and i'm pretty sure i have her other book somewhere around here don't know where it is but it's somewhere um but i've got this that is what was it uh, the, the smoke, uh, smoke gets in your eyes, and other lessons from the crematory. So, uh, from the sounds of it, it's oh, it's memoir. Okay, <laughs> memoir of someone operating uh, a crematory in San Francisco or L.A. or somewhere. Um, but, I don't know, we'll see. It, it's been sitting on a shelf since, for like the last three, four years. I don't know. Um, but, there's that. <laughs> but yeah, no. Of, of the methods of... body disposal, however you want to phrase it. The whole compost situation seems like the best one, in my opinion, you know, because yeah, if like if you have stuff in a certain arrangement and whatnot, you can put, like, ash uh, with trees or, like, around the base of plants and stuff, but a lot of times when it's, like, an urn that has special whatever's in it and you can plant a seed and stuff, um, they might have it so that it's a particular kind of plant that can grow in a certain kind of situation, but for the most part, when people do that, it's just, it ends up with a giant clump of, like, ash and stuff, uh, and if it's mixed into a really rich soil, okay, but just that by itself is completely devoid of organic material, so it doesn't actually help anything grow. So, I don't know. <laughs> On that one. Side tangent. Okay. Uh, did you read The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchinson? You'd be interested in analysis of what the villain would have to do to keep that set up, including a large private garden hidden. Not interested in sprint groups in your eyes. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Totally get that. Um, I'd forgotten exactly what it was. It's just like I see it every once in a while when I look over there. Uh, I know she has another one, but I can't remember what it's called right now. It's just got a skull in the cover. But yeah, no, it. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally understandable. Isn't the carbon and the ashes organic? The carbon, well, ugh. 
It also depends on, yeah, it depends on the kind of plants that you're planting. Um, and everything else. From what I remember hearing, at least, um, in the difference between, like, a forest fire and a, uh, controlled, um, like, restricted, uh, remains situation is if you're trying to break down uh, bone and stuff like and that's the purpose Either it has to go for a longer period, or it has to be at a higher temperature, and that messes with the carbon. That could easily not be accurate. I don't know, it's been like a couple of years since I looked into any of this, and stuff might have changed since then. Um, but that's the last that I knew about it. And if it's... like a forest that that it's working with then there's other elements already present so it kind of counteracts and works together it's something out it's something to check out for sure <laughs> so I don't know on that one. Yeah. Don't you? Um, okay. Uh, is human composting better for the environment? Uh, cremation rates are st uh, rising steadily, and they're more than 53.8% nationally, according to um, uh, families turn to cremation because of a lower price than burials, which is about the total cost, uh, but also perceived value. In many cases, families are choosing cremation and then spending their budget on the memorial service or celebration of life. Ultimately, Americans are choosing alternatives that are outside the norm in order to best represent their values and those of their loved ones. Uh, one of those cons uh, considerations is environmental. Interesting grain funerals uh, among 40-year-olds rose from 43% in 2010 to 64%. In 2015, human composting might appeal to those green, on those green grounds to a majority of Americans. Uh, it uses one-eighth of the energy of cremation and saves over a metric ton of carbon dioxide per person. Uh, put in tangible terms, if every Washington resident chose recomposition as their after-death Preference within 10 years, it would save the same amount of energy required to power 54,000 homes for a year. Huh, interesting. <coughs> uh, I have not read The Butterfly Garden, but I would be interested to read The Butterfly Garden. So, yeah. It sounds intriguing. Indeed. 
Indeed it does. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, let's restructure this, shall we say? Like I just, I just want to know, right, why, okay, that was a great happy pick with the skulls, pull that, recomposition saves so much energy, seriously, like, it's very cool that it saves that much energy, and that was indeed a very happy picture with the skulls, I just, I have some questions, right, why, Why are those the, um, top, uh, auto inserts when you type in what happens if you intubing? Like, are there that many people Googling it? Like, it, I, why? Just why? <laughs> Like, I, mm, guys, really? Google results have gotten more interesting for the worst one children at home Googling. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, are y'all that bored? They... You know, you just type it in random whatever and just to see if there's a thing. I just just wondering, you know. Just just wondering. Uh wait, what? And again, what happens if you put a body in car <laughs> in college? Why? What? <laughs> Cold? Concrete? At least concrete makes sense. It's like someone watched a mob movie and now like they're googling it to see what would happen. But coffee? What happens? What happens if you put a body in coffee? Like, okay, what happens if you drink blood? Like, okay, y'all y'all watch some vampire movies or, like, there's something about vampires. But, like, some of the other ones, I don't know. Like, <laughs> what? Seriously, like. Wait, 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 what? And again. Why? <laughs> what happens if you put a bone in vinegar? Okay, 
science question. What happens if you put a baby in a microwave? Really? Really? That it's just guys. Guys <laughs> Why? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Interesting. All right, so that's that's one of the options if it's just the C. But if you go with that, just just start typing in coffee, then it switches to okay. All right, let's let's go for that. Let's see what happens. What? What happens if you put a body in coffee and it comes up with what happens to your body when you drink coffee? Okay. I mean, that's just boring. What is coffee body? That's just describing the flavor of the coffee. Ay. What happens if you eat coffee grounds? I mean... They don't taste all that great, so, you know. But, you know, you can add them to cake and stuff, and it's fine. Or rather, crystallized stuff. I don't know about the coffee grounds itself, but, like, the beans are okay, so, like, presumably, uh, the grounds themselves are fine, too, so... Really? That that's just a letdown, man. Like Okay. Bing Bing, you have let me down. Alright, you have let the entire You have let the chat down. Yeah, no, like, okay. Terrible side effects! Yeah, well, if you go into, like, caffeine OD and stuff, yeah, okay. Alright, fine. Fine. If you're not answering my questions, Google. No. You're not answering the questions, bang. We'll go to Google and see what happens. I mean, I can see asking if you can survive on just coffee, but like, no. <laughs> I do appreciate because, like, sometimes it's just there's there's all a, a <laughs> yeah it it's it's interesting how different the responses are, <laughs> but like I I do appreciate the approach with this right. Because there's times when it's like, well, you can do this, and there's this, and there's this, and it's like, can you survive on just coffee? No. <laughs> no, you can't. Just, like, straight up. I'll give you more info, you know, in a sec, but, like, don't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Science connected. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. What? Can I survive on just milk? Uh, no. Oh! <coughs> well! Leave it to Cora to find interesting ones. <laughs> Okay. 
Seriously, Cora, there's a reason that I haven't bothered going on your site for a while. Like, seriously. Of course, that being said, Quora and Yahoo Answers are both gold mines of intriguing questions. It's a question that needed a full no up front. Seriously, like, uh, no. Which would be the effects of injecting coffee directly into one's vein. Especially when it's phrased like that and not like, Can I inject coffee into my arm or something? It's like, yes, yes, hypothetically speaking. What would be the effects of injecting coffee directly into one's veins? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> I just I just like the response though. At least we can rest assured you won't actually do this. <laughs> God. an immune response, a decreased blood oxygenation. Please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Don't feel like grabbing my biochem books. Fair. <laughs> but you should see the following. Since coffee is a water-based liquid, normally it will merge with your blood and travel sus systemically. I always get systemic and systematic confused there. Um. Oh, wow. Okay. You guys all right? I'm hoping it's just a tiny earthquake. <clears throat> um, of course, it depends on how finely ground. Oh, jeez, yeah, okay. Of course, it depends on how finely ground the coffee beans are. As to uh, what what would happen to your body? At any rate, let's assume we have some particulate matter swirling through your body. Wherever your leukocytes, probably macrophages and neutrophils, get a chance will attack the coffee bean bits to engulf them, since the blood would have no other mechanism for breakdown. Anyway, a blood cell responding sends out a convoluted signaling cascade that eventually leads to swelling and potential clotting. Should this swelling occur in a capillary or other small vessel, you're looking at a possible occlusion, blockage of that particular vessel. This would be especially problematic in the lungs, coronary circuit, or the brain. If the coffee is in fact dilute enough to mix in with your blood, you will have an increase in blood volume without an increase in hematocrit. So your blood will carry less oxygen per, uh, per unit volume than before. It probably wouldn't be significant enough to cause serious metabolic distress, but it's a notable effect. The caffeine and other chemicals dissolved in the coffee would likely reach out through your blood vessels and into your body in a disruptive manner. Depending on what parts of your body the chemicals reach, you're likely to feel a major caffeine jolt, followed by a serious fever due to an immune response from the foreign and unwanted chemicals that your stomach would likely break down before they could enter your blood, enter the blood normally. I feel like there would be more traumatic responses, but off the top of my head, I can't think of any more specifics that I can't back without citations. Like, yeah. Let's see. All right. Well. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, but we're hanging in the doorway for a bit. Okay. I'm glad to know that you guys are doing all right. Um, yeah. Depending on where you are and positioning and stuff. Quakes can be, uh, not the best. <laughs> there. But yeah, if there's more responses, if anyone else wants to investigate them, but that's that's where we'll leave that for right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. What happens if you bury a shipping container? <laughs> Really? Really? No. Then you had your chance and failed. Oof. Okay. Yeah, 4.1. <clears throat> 4.1 can. Especially if it's like. Close ish. That's a lot. Wait a sec. Okay. So, it looks like Google Books has both Darjeeling, uh, The colorful history and precarious fate of, I think it's supposed to be the world's greatest tea from uh, what it says down here. Of course, it's a different year and a different title, so I don't know. Um, and where the wild coffee grows, 
the untold story of coffee from wherever it is. So interesting. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's working. Okay. Uh, hmm. All right, apparently the body part of this is what's messing with it, so. There we go. Uh... Wait, what? <laughs> I just have some questions. <laughs> Starting with why. Like, I get having the person with you all the time, but also, um, what? Hmm. Sorry to hear that, friends. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna just say, right? I, that looks like something else. <laughs> that doesn't look like bone ash. <laughs> because bone china is a thing, and tea. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. That's why it's called Bone China. Because using a bone china teacup for coffee would be sacrilege. <laughs> right. Okay. Slight perspective shift. Because <laughs> my knee is not having it and we need to type. So, yeah. If, if the thing moves around more, apologies in advance, but there we go. Yeah, no, um, somehow I figured it was, like, that it was, bone china tends to be pretty thin, so therefore it was brittle, so therefore it, like, it's breakable, or it's more breakable than, like, other stuff, so, yeah, no, that's, that's how it's always interpreted in my brain, but, like, okay, that makes more sense. Good to know. 
Alright. Alright. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that does make sense. In case that's of interest. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, uh, this was used as a fiction novel by Paul Borsky. Oh, I didn't know that. It's always fun when, you know, actual science things are involved, you know? What is the conversation saying? I mean, they picked a suitably spooky photo to have something to do with a hooded. Uh, okay, Heather Conway, Senior Lecturer, School of Law at Queen's University, Belfast. Five Laws About the Dead. I spook you. Death touches everyone at some stage during their lives, and usually more than once. It also triggers certain laws around what happens to the body after death. And some glaring omissions. Uh, respect for the dead and protecting public health make burial or cremation an urgent task when someone dies. Certain aspects are heavily Related, such as minimum depth of graves, the sitting, siding, sitting and management of burial grounds and crematoria, but there are comparatively few laws governing actual bodily, bodily disposal. For example, there's no set time limits for disposing of the dead. Burial in a churchyard or cemetery is not the only option. Natural burials in fields or woodland areas, burial at sea, and even private, or even burial on private land, family farm, or even the deceased's own backyard are permissible options. Uh, cremation, however, can only take place in a licensed crematorium. The law has changed to allow funeral pyres, but only in an enclosed building. I did. Mm. That seems like it would be counterproductive, you know, as a thing. After lobbying by Hindu and Sikh religious communities, there's also no legal requirement to use a funeral director in English law and does not insist on embalming unless, for example, a corpse is being repatriated or moved between countries. And while a corpse may be decently covered, uh, the use of a coffin is not mandatory. A shroud, cardboard box, or wicker basket are suitable options. That's unless the deceased is being buried at sea. A specific type of coffin is needed here. Or individual crematoria insist on one to facilitate handling the body. Um, okay, so it's written by someone uh, at the University of Belfast in June 2016. So all of this is very much focused 
to that. Um, the novel world sacrifices bones uh, were used to make the region's famous porcelain. Interesting. Okay. If that's one way to do it. Okay. All right. Um, as far as I know, uh, as far as I know, uh, green burial, at least in the States, is only a thing in certain particular areas, and <clears throat> there's a lot of places that you're not allowed to do the backyard burial thing. Or it has to be X amount of space away from housing and water supplies and whatever else. So, yeah. Okay, the the water water cremation or like resumation, liquefaction, sort of alkaline hydrolysis stuff, like okay. That all right. Um had not heard of cremation before. But apparently it's uh a more hypothetical in development process of using liquid nitrogen to super cool remains and then smashing them to bits. <sighs> if that's a thing that anyone's into, that's great. Okay, you could do that, but like, ah, uh, not Nadia, but Paula Wolski is tragically underrated. Keep an eye out for Illusion and on your next bookstore trip. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. What genre would you classify illusion as? For human composting, that was our body disposal desire. Yeah, I mean, it works. It's just, it's one of those that, whenever I see someone, like, in a film or something, and the character freezes and then shatters, it, it's always like, <laughs> nah. But, like, I could totally... Totally get it, but like, ah, no, <laughs> no. 
Okay. Uh, Tale of Two Cities, but magic. Okay. Alright. I can... Alright. Duly noted. Ah, okay. Um, alrighty. So. Interesting indeed. Um, but I, I didn't put it in there, and I thought I did. Okay. The conversation always has interesting, um, interesting stuff. There you go. Alright, so, let's go all up. Um, ba -ba 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 -da -ba 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 -da -ba 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 That's what I was going to... Okay. What happens if you... Why is it coffee is the first one? Like, it's... We strive to be sparkling conversationalists. Indeed. Indeed. And jar. So. There you go. Can a mushroom allergy kill you? It depends on how bad it is. Onset of symptoms is anywhere from 6 to 24 hours after ingestion. Death may occur from liver and kidney damage. One mushroom can contain enough poison to kill an average sized adult. <coughs> um. Uh. Mushroom poisoning. Just, just PSA here. Mushroom poisoning and a mushroom Allergy are two different things. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> In case there's anyone who's watching this who needs that little tidbit of information. Ah, 
Okay. Uh, maybe look up what happens if you pack meat and coffee grounds and marinade. Guess it would tenderize. Yeah, it would. It would do a tenderize. <laughs> it would do a tenderize. Ah, words. Thank you for the hugs, honeycomb. Tis appreciate. Um. And again, why? <laughs> why is this a question that you have? Like, If you drink smoothie, don't drink it. But allergies sometimes feel like you're being poisoned. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, also, mushroom coffee just sounds weird. Yeah, today's stream has <laughs> turned into a wild goose chase of what? It's like Google says that this is a thing. What are you people looking up? Like, why are you like this? <laughs> exactly. It's just a long stream of why is this a thing? Sugar, creamer, mold? As always, when dealing with fungi, it's not necessarily the mold itself that's a problem. Instead, the danger comes from the mycotoxins that the mold spores produce. Mycotoxins can have a variety of nasty effects on the human body when they're inhaled or consumed. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> and certain types of mycotoxins have been known to lurk in coffee beans. All flav uh, a flavor toxin B1 linked to an increase of uh, risk of liver cancer. Fumosisin B1 linked to neurodegradation or brain damage. Oh, that's that's fun. Uh, Macrocyclic trichocines linked to neurodegradation and olfactory issues. And okra tochin A. Linked to dopamine depletion, which can in turn lead to depression symptoms and chronic fatigue. It's worth mentioning that coffee is still considered by most doctors and medical professionals to be perfectly safe for adults to drink on a daily basis, and if your liver is healthy and functioning properly, it shouldn't be a problem removing trace amounts of mycotoxins from your system. However, if a person consumes large quantities of mycotoxins, uh, they can start to experience serious health problems. Okay, when was this made? September 2019. Okay, let's see. So, it's presented as, is there mold in your coffee? So, alright, what happens if you drink moldy coffee? Okay. <laughs> the clue is in the word toxic. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Seriously, why? Why, people? Alright, what happens if you... Oh, and on this one, it's debunking the myth about mycotoxins and stuff. <laughs> All right, let's see what this is. Uh, when with antioxidant study. Okay, when when was this from? Twenty nineteen. So the previous one was written in September, and this one was written in January of the same year. So. Uh, so this one came out before, uh, Living with Antioxidants. There's been talk of potentially harmful chemicals called mycotoxins in coffee. Some claim that a lot of the coffee on the market is contaminated with these toxins, causing you to perform worse and increase your risk of disease. This article reviews whether mycotoxins in coffee are something to be concerned about. Can you stop moving? Thanks. Uh, mycotoxins are formed by molds, tiny fungi that grow on crops like grain and coffee beans if they're improperly stored. These toxins can cause poisoning when you ingest too much of them. They may also cause chronic health issues and are the culprit behind indoor mold contamination, which can be a problem in old, damp, and poorly ventilated buildings. Some chemicals produced by molds may affect your health, and some have been used as pharmaceutical drugs. These include antibiotic penicillin, as well as ergotamine, an anti-migraine drug that can also be used to synthesize the hallucinogen LSD. I mean, fair. If it works for migraines and stuff, too, like... All right, I suppose. Many different types of microtoxins exist, but... Uh, the ones most relevant to coffee crops are aflatoxin B and acrotoxin A. Uh, the one's been... is a known carcinogen, has been shown to have various harmful effects. A has been less studied, but it's believed to be a weak carcinogen and may be harmful to the brain and kidneys. Still, it's important to keep in mind that you're regularly exposed to trace amounts of harmful substances, so mycotoxins are not unique in that regard. Uh, what's more, mycotoxins are neutralized by your liver and do not accumulate in your body as long as your exposure remains low. Plus, at least 100 countries around the world regulate the levels of these compounds. Though some have stricter standards than others. <laughs> what if you bury a body in a septic tank? Honestly, I've seen, like, I don't know. At least one Criminal Minds episode where that happened. Um. Yeah. Let's do an investigate. Mm. 
<clears throat> if you want the one that we were just doing, that is no, no, it's not. There it is. Okay. What happens if you add poisonous plants to your mouth? Well, presumably. <laughs> uh. What happens if you add poisonous plants to cat eats? Okay. Okay, so this one's from 2012. Mm -hmm. Had to stop watching Criminal Minds. Sad. Spencer's a cute sweetie. Also love the hacker chick. His name we can never remember. Um. Hmm, okay, one sec. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Yay for remembering. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, uh... Honestly, it was Garcia for Criminal Lines and, like, Garcia and Spencer on Criminal Lines. Um, honestly, I haven't watched any, like, of the, the procedural anything, um, for a long while, but, like, in... Uh, for a while it was NCIS and Criminal Minds, and that was basically all that I watched most of the time. But then they switched up the cast for NCIS. Uh, yep. <laughs> Which, fair, whatever. But it changes the entire show's dynamic. Ah. Okay. Uh. Oh. Okay. Does it... Can I do the read, or does it just have the thing? No? I had a thing that would play it, and now it doesn't. So I don't know. That's weird. Alright, let me know if the audio stuff is playing still. I think it's muted, but I don't know. Uh, do you think Spencer is ace? Um, honestly, from how much he seems to be, uh, kind of coded like Sherlock, I'm thinking that's, um, I'm I'm pretty sure that's uh how he's meant to be interpreted, yeah. I Okay. There's there's a thing over here uh that looks like it's trying to play something. And it doesn't seem to want to just exit out. So Oh, okay. Apparently it did. <laughs> There we go. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, from what I've seen and uh, the um, occasional fan fiction from the show, <laughs> it's very rare that I've seen anyone interpret Spence as not being ace or arrow ace sometimes. So, yeah. My Anno. They're cool beans. <sighs> I just want to read the thing. That's all. You know? Just, just let me read the thing and then I might come back and read 
more stuff on your site. Okay? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when the compost pile is maintained properly, uh, mixed well, kept moist, contained, etc., the answer to what goes in the compost pile is very simple. Everything once alive can and should be composted where possible. The only exception is that the food scraps should be composted first in a closed container and then moved to the main pile. That eliminates the issue of attracting wild animals. I use a metal canister where the larvae of the black soldier fly do the first step of decomposition. When the material is completely composted, the toxins in the poisonous plants are neutralized. Toxins would not be transferred to other plants no matter what. For several years, my Indian hawthorn has had leaf spots. We cut them back two years ago, but new growth has been spindly and stunted. We sprayed it with fungicide and fertilizer, but there has not been much improvement. Uh, Larope is in the area, and its roots seem to be rotting. I believe it's root or crown rot. Uh, is this a fungus present in the soil and affecting all plants, or is it? Or is the cause over watering, poor drainage, or weather? We're considering removing the plants and planting something else. If it's soil condition, okay. All right. So it looks like it's just a bunch of people have asked questions, and then they're all in the same thing with no okay right yeah <laughs> to answer the question of uh is the thing um like would the thing mess with other plants it should be fine Okay. Ow. <sighs> ow, ow, ow. Like, whenever I, <laughs> seriously, like, whenever I feel like this, it stretches, or is it, like, it stretches my shoulder and stuff. It always feels like I'm in a weird, like, top model photo shoot or something. Because, like, the shoulder's at a weird angle, and it's, like, just, meh. <laughs> like, even though it's just the shoulder, just chilling. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, what did I end up at? Trying to get back to Google, yo. That's there we go. Okay. Alright, so growing my cucumbers in compost made from cannabis will not result in gum. cucumbers we can get high on. No. No, unfortunately. Um, it might alter the taste of them. A bit. Uh, but if it's like actually composted material, it should be fine. Um, <laughs> which is hilarious because, like, when because this is the shoulder that has issues and stuff, and when my shoulder's having issues, that's that's the pose that I end up in just because it stretches out the wonky parts. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the most sarcastic pose that, like, I do, but it's just like, okay. <laughs> uh. Okay. Does mushroom coffee make you high? No. <laughs> uh... <sighs> okay. Hmm. Uh, when we tried out for cheerleading, one of the cheerleaders taught us a leg stretch that was a great stretch, and you look really cool doing it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Shall I put my wild mushroom in compost? Oh, okay. Basically, yeah. Uh. Gotta feel this. Is it okay to put moldy food in compost? Is it okay to put the thing that's trying to decompose in the place that you put the things that are trying to decompose? Like. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> so basically, that. Question is a ginormous red herring. I mean, it's one of those that it would make sense, especially if it's like if you have a plant that's non toxic that you're trying to grow, if you're trying to grow a food plant out of something that's potentially deadly, would that mess with you? I uh, don't know. Let's see. But, at that point, I don't know, because in, in, where'd it go? In the, in the here, um, hmm. 
when Travis was asking David about the poisonous plants and stuff, all we're seeing as the audience is his own personal notes and whatnot. So, if he knew the answer, it would stand to reason that it would be something that's, like, made a note of and, like, oh, this is an intriguing question. <clears throat> I haven't told my students the answer, but, you know, I'll do whatever and, like, we'll, we'll figure it out and stuff. And just, like, ah, yes, that's an intriguing question. You should look more into that. Ah, yes, yes. We... Will will help do the experiments to prove or disprove that hypothesis, but like you would expect there to be some kind of notation in there. Of, oh yeah, well, there a student had a question. It was a fascinating question. Uh, we should probably look at these other things. But like, okay, but it didn't. But um, some of the articles that I've seen about poisonous plants being added to stuff ha weren't written until, like, 2012, so that was a good, like, seven or eight years after when this is supposed to be taking place. Um, the mushroom thing, though, like, it's a mushroom, it's going to break it down, it's fine. <laughs> but it also had nothing to do with the meth X. Yeah, um... That's true. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It is interesting, though, because if if Travis was the one who created it, and Levi is the, I don't know, distributor, what have you. Travis was the only one on the radar, as far as... As far as I'm aware, I realize that y'all have already finished reading the entire thing, which is bugging me, because, like, there's there's some part of my brain that's like, but, but does, does this get resolved, and do, does this happen, and stuff? But, like, I'm not gonna, because, you know, spoilers. <laughs> but, yeah, it... Seriously looking forward to anything else that she writes, though. Like, oh. <laughs> Indeed. Um. Fine, fine, night bot. So. I didn't you know this was a thing. You know what would be funny? A cheerleader using a spirit stick to actually banish evil spirits. 
Okay, so, like, I know absolutely nothing about cheerleading. So, might not be the best person to write that narrative. But. But. <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> Alright, uh... Okay, what's the bias of this one? Alright, uh... Internachi... Boulder, Colorado. Okay. I'm not seeing anything past that. Okay. Um, alright. Compost is an accumulation of degrading food scraps, plants, and other nutrient rich organic matter. It's an easy and environmentally responsible way to dispose of biodegradable kitchen waste, which can then be returned to the soil as fertilizer for vegetable and flower gardens. Composting helps reduce the volume of material in landfills. And is used to improve soil structure and provide nutrients for growing plants. Uh, the breeding ground for dangerous pathogens, some of which have killed or seriously harmed unsuspecting gardeners. Inspectors should familiarize themselves with these illnesses, some of which can be contracted in other parts of the house. Okay. Uh, Aspergillosis is a fungal infection of the lungs that's caused after the inhalation of a fungus commonly found in rotting plant matter. While normally not life-threatening, it can be extremely dangerous if enough spores are inhaled. Disease killed the 47-year-old British man after he was engulfed in clouds of dust from the compost he had intended to use in his garden. Ugh. Ugh. Ew. The symptoms of farmer's lung resemble pneumonia and may result from respiratory exposure to certain fungal and bacterial pathogens present in rotting organic materials like mushrooms, hay, and sugar cane. Beware of dusty white patches, as they're a sign that dangerous spores are present. Can be treated with antibiotics. Um, histoplasmosis, caused by fungus that grows in guano and bird droppings. Healthy immune system can usually fight it off. Um, Legionnaires. Uh, Frontia. Tetanus. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. <sighs> 
Okay. So. Um. We've done a couple of, uh, deep dives and whatnot today. Um. Day's ending a lot different than I thought it would start. <laughs> that, wow. Day's ending different than I thought it would. There we go. Okay. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. We've been on for around about three hours. Um. So. Uh. We're going to be back on Thursday for the continuation and the finale of Firekeeper's Daughter, which I don't know how well it's, there we go, but it's got a little, a little flame embossed on there that's the same one that's on all of the chapter headings. It just doesn't have the 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 fire rays. Where is it? Where is it? The, the fire rays coming out on there. Um. Okay. So, do we want to do a raid or do we want to just end? Cause, yeah, looks like a leaf and a feather. It does. Like, it, it also kind of looks like a hand that's, like, reaching up. Um. But. I All right. Yeah, seriously, the cover design is on point. <laughs> Which, incidentally, like, okay, I hit something else. Um, incidentally, right, there's, like, there's a whole section in the back that's, like, acknowledgments and, um... Like sources and whatever that I have read, <laughs> I just you know didn't read the bits in the middle apparently. Okay. So you know raid prospects. Yeah. Honestly, same <laughs> to, to be fair. Like, I haven't, like, honestly, I haven't been on Twitch just to be on Twitch aside from, like, oh, Tom was on. Okay. For a while. Um, I think it's, like, Toma and, uh, Bean or Zane? Yeah. Yeah, they're going by Zane now. Uh <laughs> so yeah, th those are kind of the only ones that I've actually <laughs> been watching for any, you know, amount of time. And and Shane. But okay. Nobody's on right now. 
really. So have a fabulous rest of your day. We'll see you on Thursday or out sooner in the Discord and on the YouTubes. Uh, there's a video going live tomorrow and I'm going to try and wrangle the editing programs into um, some sort of cohesiveness so that I can edit the next couple of things. Uh, but I'm definitely looking at a new um, editing program in the future. So, uh, between today and tomorrow, I need to edit the captions for the one that's going up tomorrow, though. So, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you later. Have a good night. Bye, friends. Let me type, dang it. There you go. Alright, and with that, I bid you adieu.